going on guys it's Caleb and today we're going to do another tutorial with some JavaScript we're going to jump right on in and learn some little basics about for loops so let's go ahead and go to Code Academy and head on over to the JavaScript we're on the for loop section so let's go ahead and start our course and for loops the basics alright so let's go ahead and reset our console alright so let's get started we are learning how to program because we don't want to do boring, repetitive work. The computer should do that. The first exercise is a good example of exactly why you want to learn for loops. Use five console.log statements to print out the numbers 1 to 5. Try not getting angry at me for this annoying exercise. Head over to the next exercise and see how we can use for loops to do this task more efficiently. So to pass this, we just want to write five console.logs. So console.log and we want to log out one and spell console right. There we go. And since this is repetitive, I'm gonna copy and paste this. So there's one, two, three, four, five, and change this from five, four, three, two, one. Alright, go ahead and click run. And as you can see in our terminal, we have 1 to 5. So let's go to the next exercise. Alright, let's go ahead and reset this. Instead of manually typing the console.log five times, we can use a for loop to do this. The aim of this exercise is just to show how a for loop looks and demonstrate how useful it is. Subsequent exercises will A. Talk you through the walkthrough or walk you through the syntax bit by bit. B. Explain how the computer thinks as it executes a for loop. We initially focused on using the for loops just to count numbers to keep things simple, but by section 3 we will show you how to do more fancy things. So what it wants us to do, the for loop in the code will print out 1 to 5, and use far less code than what you used in the previous exercise. Change the 6 to an 11 and press run. This will see the computer to print out 1 to 10. So right now it's printing out 1 to 5 and let's go ahead and change the 6 to an 11 and run it and we'll get 1 to 10 printed out on our console. So let's go ahead to the next exercise starting the for loop and let's just reset our console Congratulations, you just run your first for loop, but what you're probably really keen to do is write your own for loop. Below is the general syntax of the for loop. We want to focus on the first line in the next few exercises. For, open parenthesis, var i equals 1, semicolon, i is less than 11, semicolon, i equals i plus 1, semicolon close off the parenthesis and you open up your curly brace and this will be the code you want to run with inside the for loop. Every for loop makes the use of the counting variable. Here our variable is called i, but we can have any name. The variable has many roles. The first part of the for loop tells the computer to start with a value of 1 for i. It does this by declaring the variable called i and giving it a value of 1. When the for loop executes the code in the code block in the bit between the curly braces, it does so by starting off where i equals 1. This for loop starts off at 1 and will end at 10, changing the for loop such that it will start off at 5. So, to change the for loop to start off at 5, we want the for loop, we want to go into the for loop and right where it declares our i variable by using the var. We want to change it from a 1 to 5. And what this will do, this will declare a new var variable or a new i variable that is equal to 5, but 5 is it will run up until 5 is less than 11. Saying that i equals i plus 1. So every time that this for loop gets run, it's gonna start off with 5 until i, which is 5 at the moment, is less than 11. So it's gonna run until it gets up to 10. And it's um, incrementing by or incrementing by i plus one. So if we go ahead and run this, we're gonna get five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten in our console. So that was good. Let's go ahead and go to the next exercise. 
Let's go ahead and reset our console. Ending the for loop. We know how to control where the for loop starts. How do we control where it ends? Well, that's the second part of the for loop determines that. And the i is less than 11 is where it's telling you where to stop it at. Here, this for loop will keep running until i equals 10. An example, while i is less than 11, 10 is less than 11. So when i equals 2 or i equals 9, the for loop will run. But once i is no longer less than 11, the for loop will stop. We know this for loop counts from 1 to 10. Change the for loop such that it starts at 4. Change this for loop such that it counts up to and including 23. In example, we do not want 24 to be printed out. Run your for loop and see it, it count from 4 to 23. So to do this, we can just change our i from 1 and we can change it to 4 because that wants us to start out at 4. Now a good way to include things is to use the less than or equal to sign. And so we're going to add an equal sign right here so it's i is less than and equal to 23. This means whenever i is 4 and it's still less than or equal to 23, it still be ran. So that's okay. And it's just going to console.log out whatever number we're at. So it's going to keep looping all the way up until i is less than 23. So whenever it, i equals 23, 23 is less than, but it's not less than 23, but it's equal to. So it will stop right after 23. So if we go ahead and run this, as you can see, we got the correct, and it counts from 4 all the way up to 23. Each time, it's console.logging our number. Let's go ahead into the next for loop. Let's go ahead and reset it. We can now control where the loop starts and ends. What about controlling what happens in between? The examples we've looked have have used i equals i plus 1. This has meant that we have incremented the variable i up by 1 each time. Because i equals i, so if 2, if i was 2, 2 equals 2 plus 1. And then if i was now 3, i equals i plus 1, so that would be 3 equals 3 plus 1, so it now equals 4, and so forth. Rules to learn. A more efficient way to code to increment up by 1 is to write i++. Plus plus. And this is just a, a um, really common way that you'll see i++. Plus plus. And it just means that it's adding 1 each time that it loops. And another common way to go down is i++. Minus minus. And this will, de um, it will minus 1 each time. We can increment up any value by writing i plus x equals, or plus equals x where x is how much we want to increment up by, and i plus equals 3 counts up by 3. Now, you're wondering, why not put i plus i equals 3? Because it's already saying that. The plus equals says i equals i plus 3. It's just another way of writing it, in other words. So instead of writing out a more complex way, you can say whatever i is already is, add 3 to that. So if i was 2 and you plus equals 3, i is now going to be 5 instead of just 3. We can increment down by a value by writing minus equals x. And this is the same thing as the plus equals. If i was 5 minus equals 3, i is now going to be 5 minus 3, which is equals to 2, and so forth. The code counts every number from 0 to 35. Make it start counting from 5, please. Stop the counting when it prints out 50. Only count every fifth number, so we want to increment i by 5. So, if we want it to start out 5, we change our variable i to, to 5. And we want it to end at 50. Or print out every number to 50. So we do less than or equal to 50. Now instead of adding 1 up to it every time, we're going to do plus equals 5. This will increment 5 to each i. Now if we go ahead and run this, we got 5, 10, 15, 20, all the way up to 50. So it's adding 5 each time. So that was obviously correct. So let's go ahead and go to the next section. Actually, that was the end of this section. <laughs>
Alright guys, so I gotta get a little carried away there in four loops, but if you're still not getting the hang of it, make sure to look down in the um, left hand side, and if there's a show me a hint, click. make sure to click on it and read it. But okay guys, until next time, make sure to like the video, thumbs up, and subscribe for more videos. Um, don't forget to like it up.